In this section, we're going to start to do a quick aside and talk about streams in Dart. So let's get to it. We've got a lot to learn. All right, so first off, a definition of sorts. So this is coming straight from the Dart official documentation on streams. A stream is a source of asynchronous data events. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, yeah, it doesn't really make any sense to me either. So I got to be honest with you. I want to level with you. Streams are not the easiest thing in the world to understand. So we're going to first begin by taking a look at a rather in-depth analogy. We're going to consider this analogy. We're going to talk about it a little bit and a couple different odds and ends around it. And then we're going to write some code to get a better idea of how streams work. So without further ado, let's talk about a quick analogy. Once we understand it, we'll then come back to this idea of streams. Okay, so here's the analogy. I want you to imagine that we are building a chocolate cake factory. So this is our factory right here. That's supposed to be the roof, I guess. Inside of our factory, as you might guess, we're going to create chocolate cakes. Now our factory is a little bit special. When we say that this is a chocolate cake factory, we really mean chocolate cake. So if someone comes to our factory and they ask for like a cherry cake or I don't even know what other kind of cakes there are. I don't have cake that often, I wish I did. But if someone comes and they're asking for anything else, sorry, we can't help you out. Our factory specializes only in chocolate cakes. So we're gonna do a little bit of interactive diagramming here. And we're gonna walk through the process by which our factory might work, okay? So I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna be pulling up a couple elements here over time. I'm gonna first start with this one here on the left. So I'm gonna pull it up. Here we go. Okay, so I want you to imagine that our factory doesn't really have any remote offices or anything like that. And if people want us to make cake for them, they have to come directly to us and they have to fill out a little form that says that they want us to bake a cake for them. And on that form, they have to specify the type of cake that they want. So this customer is gonna walk up to our factory, up to the front door right here. They're gonna take their form and they're gonna hand it off to this person that we're going to call the order taker. So the customer gives this order to the order taker, like so. The order taker is kind of a nobody. They don't do a whole lot. All they do is literally receive that piece of paper that says the kind of cake that we need to make, and then they hand it off to the interior of our factory. So the order just comes in through the door through this order taking person. Now, as soon as that thing comes into our factory, the order is gonna be handed off to someone that we're going to call our order inspector. So this order is gonna be taken from the order taker they're going to hand it off and it's going to go directly to our order inspector. Now the order inspector's job is solely to look at the order and pull off the one important piece of information that we care about on this order. We don't care about who the order is for. You know, we don't, this person doesn't care that it's for the, this customer. They don't care about the size of the cake. They don't care about anything. All they care about is pulling off that one very critical piece of information. And that is whether or not this is an order for chocolate or some other kind. Now, this order inspector is not going to actually look at that type and say, oh, this is not chocolate, sorry, we can't help you. All this person does is pull off that one property and say, hey, you know, here's the type. Okay, I got it, I got the type off the form. Now, once this order inspector has that type, they're going to then pass the order off to our lead baker right here. So here's our lead baker. So the order type is going to go off to this baker. And now the baker is the very important person inside of our factory. The baker is going to receive just that type property right there. And the baker is going to look at that type and it's going to say, okay, let's see, is this thing asking for chocolate cake? Well, if it is, if it is asking for chocolate cake, great. Our baker is going to create a cake. Here's your cake, brand new chocolate cake. But if it's not asking for chocolate, if it's asking for like a vanilla cake or I don't know, sponge cake, whatever else, I don't know, whatever other types of cakes there are, then the baker is going to say, uh, you know what, I, I can't deal with this. No, I can't make this cake. I'm just going to say this is an error. Sorry, I can't make your cake. Get out of here. Go find someone else to make your cake for you. Now, whatever happens, we're going to definitely need our customer to come pick this order up on the other side. You know, the customer eventually wants to get their cake. 
whether or not it's a cake or there was some air during that entire process. So on the very other end, we're going to have something that we call a pickup office. So either the air or the actual cake will be thrown off to this pickup office out here. And then out there, it's gonna be up to our customer to come back around and attempt to pick up the cake or the air. And if there's an error, the customer might look at it and say, oh, oops, I guess I made a mistake here. Maybe I need to try creating another order. Or if it's the cake, great, then the customer gets their cake. Okay, so that's our analogy. That's everything. Let's take a quick pause right here. We're gonna come back to the next section and I want to point out a couple of very interesting items about this process. After we discuss the analogy a little bit, we're then going to write out a little bit of code to model this entire cake factory using streams. So quick break, and I'll see you in just a minute.